This video is part of a series called Get Good at Blender. They're designed as practical exercises that get harder each time to improve your Blender skills. The format is I show you a model, you try and create it, and then I show you how I did it. So you're not just learning through watching, you're actually practicing. So let's have a go at this one. So your first shape to mimic is just here. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, now many of you might have thought of starting with a cube, so Shift A to add, mesh, and then cube. I'll just scale that down a bit, scale in the Y. And in fact, you might mirror in the Y, that would be sensible because it's exactly the same either side. But I'll skip that puff for now, into front view, tab into edit mode, Alt Z to go to X-ray mode. And you might have thought of perhaps extruding these out and scaling them up and extruding out again and scaling up. It's getting a bit awkward when we get to this area here. So we might have to extrude across maybe and then extrude these ones upwards, scale them down a bit so they come around here. It's a little bit tricky and awkward, not impossible. And I could do a cut across here, bring it out like this, probably a mirror in the Z axis, and we'd come up with something like this. And there's no problem at all with that method, it works well, but there's actually a slightly quicker way. If I go into object mode and delete the shape, shift A to add, mesh, and then plane, RX90, so it's facing me, and I'll just move it across to the side slightly. I can do a mirror in the Z axis. So into edit mode, control R to do a loop cut across the middle here. And I can delete this face. And then into my modifiers, add modifier. I can just start typing mirror to add that. And I want it in the Z axis. Now that's not going to work because the local Z axis is a different direction. So I just need to go into object mode, control A to apply the rotation that I've made to this. And then you can see it pop there. So that applies the rotation to this object, making it the same as the global axis here, and therefore the mirror in the Z will work. Just turn clipping on so it's stuck together. And then I can go into edit mode and start editing the shape. And for this, I'll use the knife tool. You can find the knife tool down here, or you can press K for short, and you'll see that it comes up with a knife icon. It likes to start on an edge or even better a vertex and it kind of snaps to them as you can see here it's not completely necessary you can just cut in the middle here like this by left clicking and then finish the cut there and press enter to complete i'll undo that though and i will actually start at the edge here and left click each time coming out to somewhere around here i can adapt the shape in a moment so i'll come around about to here and down to here roughly and press enter to complete my cuts I can then select these faces and delete them. And already I have a very similar shape. I can go into vertex now and start editing the shape. You'll notice of course that the problem is that I haven't got a nice quad base mesh. Well, I can just go in with my knife tool, cut from here to here. Right click will actually restart the knife. So I can come from here to here, right click, here to here, and then right click to restart and here to here. I have got a triangle at the end there, but I can sort that out in a moment and I'll press enter. I can sort out the triangle at the end fairly easily. You can see the end there isn't a complete point. I can just take this one. Control Shift B is to bevel a vertex and you can see I'm splitting that into two there. I can then select these and move them up there. And I'll do a loop cut through here. Control R, loop cut through there. Makes a lot of sense. Maybe I want some more points across here. So Control B to bevel. So just normal Control B this time. And you can see I'm roughly there, I would say, maybe another loop cut across here, and then I can just curve it off a little bit better. Not that I need to move these ones on the inside here. Maybe a little bit of thickness there, and I'll scale these in a little bit and just even those out. We've got a similar looking shape to this. I'll just edit it very slightly. And there we go, we've got the shape. Well, it looks like I need to just select these G then Z to make sure they are stuck together. Now the next bit is then to add some thickness to this. Well, it'd be useful to have a mirror going across the Y axis here. So I can into edit mode for my shape, select all my faces or vertices, it doesn't matter, to top view now. And my object origin is here. So I'll need to G then Y to move that out. So it will mirror along the Y axis with the object origin there. I can just tick the Y here and we should see that appear there. And I can select the very boundary edges going all the way around and then E to extrude outwards in the Y axis to bring them in like so. And then it's a case of adapting the shape and the blade. So from here down to here, that's using control click for the shortest path. And I can GG to edge slide those in and make it a blade. Need to do the same up the top here actually with this one here. GG, slide that in and we've got a point there as well. And we've got ourselves an ax head. Looks like I want to make these ones a little bit wider. So G then Y. 
Okay, so that's the way I would create it. I think it's a nice simple way and fairly quick. So the next task then is to mirror this across to the other side over here. That should hopefully be a straightforward task. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I want to mirror in the X. I can't just click the X button here on the mirror because it's in the wrong place because of my object origin. So I can go up to my options and get my transform to only affect the origin. G then X and move that across so it's now in the middle there. So hopefully that was nice and simple. Remember to turn your origins off so you can move things around normally. Okay, so how have I managed to get some notches in my axe head like this? Pause the video and have a go at that. If you like the style of learning, you might be interested in one of my courses, or if you're dreaming of a career in 3D art, my eight week intensive program takes you from absolute beginner to indie studio ready in just two months. You'll learn essential skills, build up a strong portfolio, and be ready to launch your 3D art career. And you can find out more in the link in the description. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. You just have to apply the mirror in the X axis, and in fact, the Z axis in this case, in order to adjust them asymmetrically. But we can keep the Y axis going across here. So for my original here, I need to add another mirror modifier. So mirror, and I want to keep the Y and turn off the Y here. So this one is an X and Z mirror. So it's doing the cross here and up and down. This one is the Y mirror going in and out. So I can now apply this mirror and then I can go in and start making those notches. So for example, this area down here, I can press control B to bevel that. I can then delete those faces. It is a tiny bit awkward with a mirror. You just go into the vertex mode, E to extrude in the Y until that sticks together. Oh, I haven't got clipping turned on. Let's turn that on. G then Y, stick that together. And then I can go to edge mode and fill this one in with F and this one in with F as well. And we've got ourselves a notch. We can edit it quite easily by bringing this in like so. So let's do another one up here. I'll just zoom in, control B to bevel. And there's another way of doing this. I can use the knife tool, cut across here, press enter. Make sure my merge verts is on. Select this one, GG to edge slide. And then this one, I can just go to front view and line it up. So G to move into the same position. I could use snapping, but it's fine. Just lined up like this. And we've got a very small notch there. Let's just move these up a little bit and move these in a little bit like so. I quite like a little notch, but that's a little bit too small, I think. A little bit further, like so. And that looks great. We'll have one on the other side, so I'll do that nice and quick. So this one here, actually into edge mode, that one there, control B to bevel. Actually, that's in exactly the same place as the other one. It would be better to have this one here, control B to bevel. There we go. This time I'll delete them into vertex mode, E then Y, edge mode, F and then F. And we've got ourselves a notch to the other side. I might make that a little bit bigger, bring that into there. And we've got an ax head with some notches. Okay, so that's the hard part, I would say. The next part is making the handle. So there's the handle in the middle there. Pause the video and have a go at making that. So this one's nice and straightforward. Let's go to front view. Shift right click, shift A to add, mesh and then cylinder. It's important not to have too many vertices. So I bring this down to maybe even as low as five. Looks like I went to six in fact. So let's change that to six and then we'll just resize it and move it into position. Thin to start with and extrude things out as I need. So we'll do some loop cuts up here for the top of the handle and here, base handle there and then interface mode, select my face loop, so alt left click on one of the lines going across the loop I want to select and alt E to extrude along normal. So I can just bring them out like so. That looks about right. I've just noticed though that I'm using the wrong blade. Let's use the ones that I actually made over here and the blades themselves. Go into edit mode, into x-ray mode and just move these in. So G then X, move that into there. That one as well, G then X, move that across. You could in fact make this all one shape if you wanted to, or you can overlap it slightly by scaling it up and just have a slight overlap. That's absolutely fine to do that. A slight overlap like that makes no difference. So let's go to front view again and start making our edits here. So I want about five cuts there. The top one I'll extrude out. So Alt E, extrude along normals. The bottom one the same. Maybe that one could be a bit bigger. And I've made these kind of strap type things here just by selecting these and then beveling and using the wheel of my mouse to create an extra cut. And then selecting the inside ones, I can change my transform pivot point to individual origins, then I can scale them down and they'll all come in like so. 
There's a few tiny bevels and things like that. So I can go in and adapt these. So edge mode, GG, and slide that down like so, creates a bevel. This one as well, GG, a little bit of a slope upwards. Rather than having a 90 degree angle like that, I think it looks better with a slight slope down. Same for this one as well, GG. And notice I've got an extra loop cut in here. I can easily get rid of that by, oh, left click, Control X to dissolve. So that's dissolve edges that are unnecessary. And that's looking quite good. There's a few notches around the place. So if you haven't already, have a think about how I did that. So Control R to do a loop cut, couple of loop cuts. I can do a little bit of rotation here. Oh, back to bounding box center and then some rotation. Just to make the axe a little bit wobbly, I might scale in the Z as well. I quite like a little bit of variation. Into vertex mode, select a vertex, Control B to a bevel vertex. I know this is interesting when I'm scaling up, it's going at an angle like that. Have a quick think why it's beveling so thin rather than nice and wide like this. Well, I'll undo that. Let's go to object mode. I need to press Control A to apply the scale. I'll just quickly show you if I press N on my keyboard, go to item, see the scale is non-uniform and it's taking that into account with my bevel. So Control A, apply the scale and you can see it's all back to one. Press N to get rid of that. Into edit mode, Control Shift B for bevel. Use the wheel of my mouse to get rid of that extra one there. And I've got myself a notch. It's a little bit weird though. It does work from around here, but you can see it's actually a single face. So it's rendering it as triangles. We can force it to render it by selecting these two and press J to join. And maybe I'll GG to edge slide that one to make it an interesting notch like so. And this one here, Control Shift B, join those together, J to join. And this one, I'll bring down slightly to there. And we've got a couple of notches there. And there we have it, a fun looking low poly axe. There's probably a few adjustments and edits I could do. So I'll probably go into the handle and start changing things around. Just editing those slightly, that looks a little bit more like a strap now than this, which looks a bit uniform, I would say. And at the top there, I'd probably scale this up, rotate it. So it's got a little bit more of an interesting look to it. And I think that looks like a fantastic warrior's ax. I wouldn't like to be on the end of that one. So hopefully you got an okay with that and enjoyed the process. Let me know how you got on by tagging me in Instagram or wherever it is that you post your work. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.